it's a hell of a way to spend a Monday when I get to chat with the great Anne Hathaway. So thank you for giving me a few minutes today. Thank you so much. In space, too. Well, you know, interstellar, I figured it would be kind of a, you know. Oh, I like the reference. <laughs> uh, thanks for giving me a few minutes and congratulations. I watched The Witches last week. I was thoroughly entertained from start to finish. Uh, largely by your performance, uh, you are a lot of fun to watch. Um, I wonder if I could share with you, I had a thought when I saw the trailer and I'm dying to ask you this. Is she doing Melania Trump? Who were your inspirations for this character? My inspirations are any people that you can think of in this exact moment who are power hungry, unethical, uh, brazenly evil, megalomaniacal, and cruel. When you're approaching a character like this, you know, the Grand High Witch is, is such a big character. She's so over the top. I'm wondering, how does that challenge you as an actor? How does that affect the kind of choices that you make when you're putting together a performance? That's a great question. Um, the truth is it all matters who's directing you because the performance you give is not necessarily the performance that winds up on screen. Right. And in this particular case, I had you know Bob Zemeckis in the driver's seat. And um, when I think back to some of my favorite performances ever, he's the director of them. You know, Bruce Willis in Death Becomes Her and Meryl Streep in Death Becomes Her. You know, just just Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> I mean, right. like, and and the list really goes on. So he seems to like have this amazing gift for getting actors to step outside their comfort zone, give heightened performances, but then just make it work in the film around them. So I felt really like if there was one director that in particular that I could trust to just kind of give a performance that you could probably see from space to, it would be him. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's also a great segue because I've always wanted to talk to someone that has worked with Mr. Zemeckis. I, I agree with you. I think he's such an underrated director when it comes to performances of actors. Obviously, he's great with technology and mm -hmm. action. He's great with actors, particularly in comedy. What kind of mood does he keep on the set? How does he direct you when you're actually in front of the camera in the moment? Oh, God, he's such a love. It's such a it's such a loving set, you know. He he's such a I mean at this point he's such a master. He doesn't need to get worked up about things. He doesn't yell. He's really he's really precise and professional. And you need to know your lines. You need to do all that stuff. But he's just a joy. It was just really really a joy. And we discovered early on that we both have a deep love of Looney Tunes, and <laughs> that kind of and that became our shared language for uh, for for a lot of the character. You didn't think I was going to say that. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. And it totally makes sense now, like seeing it in context. Um, now, I think you and I are about the same age. Did you grow up on the original film directed by Nicholas Rogue with uh, Angelica Houston? Yes. Okay. So this is another good question. When you are acting in a remake of a film, and obviously Angelica is very, very iconic in the original film, how do you go about crafting your character and sort of divorcing yourself from that to make the role your own? So you're not sort of mimicking her or taking cues from her. So I think that Angelica's performance in the 1990 version is flawless. It's iconic for good reason. And it's, it's just, it's perfect. I mean, it's just absolutely perfect. Um, the, so I felt that to do anything, uh, that even resembled imitation would be disrespectful to both of us because she so thoroughly owns it. But I considered the world in which each of our performances was given. And I really thought about what it's like to be a kid in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what it's like to be watching cartoons and then see the news flash on and the kind of stories that kids are catching glimpses of. And it is an absolutely terrifying and traumatic world for them, much more so than I think you and I grew up in. Yeah. Um, so I realized that the witch that Angelica was able to give was a witch in a very different world. And the one that I wanted to play, I, it became really important that I didn't just scare kids, didn't just traumatize kids, but I gave them somebody evil that they could laugh at. Yeah. Because I don't want them to be afraid of megalomaniacal jerks. I want them to see them for what they are. And I want them to realize that there is no true power in hate. And that people who think that there is are completely ridiculous. Yeah. 
So we're an LGBTQ site, uh, Queer Tea. Oh, I know Queer Tea. Don't worry okay. about that. <laughs> you, you have great taste. You know now. I know. <laughs> well, th- I mean, so obviously in the queer community, we love so many of your movies. Uh, Devil Wears Prada, The Princess Diaries. Which ones don't you love? Um, it's, what's that? I <laughs> No, it's fine. Keep going. Uh, we love so many of your films and your performances. Um, you know, Fontaine, Catwoman. Uh, I'm wondering, because you are someone who's very attuned to the community. You're a, you're a gay meme. I don't know if you know this. You and RuPaul, uh, that time you were on the same talk show together. Uh, the caption is, we must protect Anne Hathaway at all costs. <laughs> I'm wondering for you, what is it about us that speaks to you? What What is it that you find so fascinating about queer people? Um, well, I'm not sure if you know, my older brother's gay. Yeah. And um, so it's, it's literally a family issue for me. And, um, and then it's become, I don't know, it's just become something else. I, I've just always had a real, um, I, I really take great issue with people trying to dictate how other people can live and how people want to limit how people can live. And the, the queer community has so borne the unfair brunt of that. And I don't like it. And I do have this platform. I'd be doing this anyway, but I happen to have this platform and it, it makes sense to, to say these things that are so basic. They are so basic. Love is love is like the most basic thing. And yet, and we, and the lesson landed thousands of years ago. And yet we still have not practiced it to the extent that we can define ourselves by it as human beings. Um, it doesn't seem that hard, but, uh, but here we are. And so, um, so I can't give some great immersive answer. I, I'm very well aware that I'm not a member of the queer community, that I'm an ally. And um, so I don't think that I could necessarily define it except to say that I'm, I just, I got your back. That's, it, it's good to know. Uh, it's always good to hear, particularly in uncertain times like this. Um, with everything going on with By the COVID, way, can I just say one thing? I also don't just yeah. want to like define the community by trauma. Oh, absolutely not. No. Like it's also just like, who else do you want to be sat next to anywhere? <laughs> well, the best part is we do. Uh, that's, that's just a matter of fact. Uh, so it means you have great, great taste, like I say. So I feel a need to ask, though, jumping off of that answer, uh, with everything that's going on with the pandemic, with the election, there's a lot to be scared of on the news, like you say. How are you coping with all of this? Uh, what is your sort of zen to find your center and not let the anxiety get to you? I mean, it does sometimes. I think yeah. that's key to letting it get to you sometimes. And um, I found that I I had to let it get to me. I had to talk about it. I had to like miss a couple Zoom calls with, with people that I was really looking forward to seeing because I just didn't have it together. And then you do that enough and then you start trying out different things until you figure out what works for you and it's different for everybody. Um, I've, I'm, I feel really lucky. I'm married to an awesome guy and we figured out how to make each other laugh through this. And since we've figured that out, things have gotten a lot easier. That's wonderful. What does make you laugh in, in, in an anxious time? Honestly, like what makes me cackle or is the numbers of early voters. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> Absolutely cackle. Um, Shit's Creek. I'm not oh, just saying yes. that because I'm talking to Queer Tea. That has been my go-to feel good. Dan Levy makes me laugh so hard. Absolutely. And you're wonderful. Thank you so much. Congratulations on the film. I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. Loved our talk. Thank you. Me too.